Today, I'm going to show you how I find easy, profitable SEO niches in three steps with ChatGPT and AI. This is day one of the 100 website challenge. So this is the first day towards building out 100 websites in 90 days using AI SEO. It's going to be insane. And I've already started three new websites this year, and it was pretty easy. It was not time consuming at all. You can see this website is set up in about 20 minutes. It's already getting this record high traffic. And this is after the helpful content update. And I'll come on to how this is performing plus the rest. And I'll show you how I got them all ranking using my easy three-step niche research process like this. Plus, I'm going to show you all the free ChatGPT SEO prompts I use for niche selection, how to find ways to monetize your site, and how to get ChatGPT to actually pick the best domain names for you to save dozens of hours of work. So basically, the way that I'm going to do the niche research for these 100 websites is to essentially look at what's worked for me so far. So I'm going to be using autoblogging AI to create the content. And that's what I've done for this one in Spanish, this one in German, and this one is a English spiritual site. You see all the traffic and the keywords, etc., going up for it nicely. Now, what's worked previously is number one, what we don't do. So essentially, nothing YM or YL related. I think that's unethical if you're doing AI content. Number two, nothing seasonal or data driven because we want to be able to constantly rely on that traffic and not see it going up and down like a yo-yo. I don't want anything dating related either because then it can get a bit weird and it must be monetizable with ads. So if you look at Discover Avers and Bogle Fonderland, they're not making a bazillion dollars a month, but they're making some money with ads and hopefully that will continue improving as the traffic for the website continues to improve too. And I think that's an essential part of the niche research and most people get wrong because they don't figure out, can I monetize this website and how am I going to monetize this website up front? Now, one of the best ways to do that is to essentially look for competitors who are already making money in your niche. So what you can actually do is if you use ChatGPT4 with the enabled plugin WebPilot, you can ask it to do that research for you and then find examples of websites that are making money and how they make money, right? So you can say, for example, find me 10 spiritual websites and tell me all the ways that they monetize and make money with the traffic that comes to their website. That's going to do the research for you and find all the links to the top websites in, for example, the spiritual niche. And then you can see ChatGPT is actually visiting those websites to gather information on how they monetize and make money from the traffic. So this is just a nice way of automating all the research because otherwise you're going to be messing around. And then you get some ideas for how are they actually monetizing their website. And the thing is, if you don't have a trained eye for this, it's quite easy to miss what they're actually doing because sometimes it's hidden on their website or you don't see what's obvious. It's easy to spot the ads, obviously, but you but you might not have even thought about private meditation coaching or affiliate links to corporate meditation classes or guided meditation or even info products on guided meditations, etc. And basically all we're doing with this process is actually confirming and validating the fact that you can make money with the niche that you're choosing. Oh, and now in the space of 10 seconds, you got one, two, three, eight different ways to monetize your spiritual website that we could easily implement for your site. So if you have a spiritual site, you do it for that. If you have a pet's website, you do the same. And that way you can just get tons of ideas for monetization and figure out the best way to squeeze the money from your site. Now, what's worked really well. So for example, with this website and this one, I've talked a lot about it before, but basically focusing on different languages. Now, do you think that Latin languages are easy for AI to understand? There's a lot of volume because you've got a lot of countries speaking Spanish. And I think Spanish particularly is a great one because it's an easy language for AI to use. You can actually rank with a .com address. As you can see, the rankings are doing well for this site. So you don't need like a .es address to rank. Whereas if I was trying to buy like a juliangoldi.italy address, it's an unsupported top level domain on a lot of domain sites, right? I don't have any experience with getting those sort of top level domains. Whereas I know this process for me works with Spanish sites. And ideally, whichever niche you choose, it must have number one, a good search volume, obviously, but also a good amount of keywords. Now, what's a good amount of keywords for an AI SEO website? Well, I would say, you want at least 500 keywords that you know are realistic to rank for. Now, how do you check that? I'm actually going to use SE ranking today. We're switching it up today, mainly because it's a lot cheaper than a lot of other tools. So it's more affordable for the people watching. And, you know, unless you have an agency, a lot of tools are, are too expensive. Top of that, I just want to show you something new. No point showing you the same thing every single time. Um, we're going to go to all projects and then do some keyword research. One thing I want to say here, if you want to link to this site, there's a link in the description with an affiliate link disclaimer. Don't Google it. Go on my affiliate link. Come on, guys. I give you a lot of value. It supports the channel, guys and girls. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to come on to the keyword research in a sec. 
So essentially what we're going to do here is make sure we have WebPilot selected. And I'm going to paste this prompt. It's inside my free course. Um, we're going to find 50 SEO sub niche ideas based on the constraints below. It must be easy for AI content, simple. There must be a monetization method. We don't want anything YMYL. We don't want anything too competitive. And I'm just going to add this little bit in the end. So I want to focus on Spanish sites for now. And I want the translation of the keywords we're going for in the topics, right? So I've got this whole prompt. And what we'll say is give me three examples of money-making keywords for each niche with the translations, et cetera, in the table so I can compare the best options. What that's going to do for me using WebPilot is find a load of sub-niches that I could implement for my AI SEO websites. Now, whilst we're waiting for that to load, let me talk you through my strategy here. You know, we could do a different niche for every single website. We're making a hundred of them. It's going to be pretty insane. But the problem with that is it's going to be really hard if we do a hundred different niches because I won't be able to master the monetization on them. It's going to be better to specialize in one thing. If we find a good affiliate deal in one niche, then we can use that across all of them. And potentially we could interlink our pages. Now interlinking different websites that you own in the same niche, you have to tread with caution there because they have to be very relevant. We shouldn't be like forcing links just for SEO between different sites because that doesn't look good to search engines. It can look a bit suspicious and unnatural. And if we do interlink between different websites, we're not going to be overdoing it because obviously that would look suspicious to search engines and that could lead to penalties. So it's something we'll do with caution, but it can work. So now we've got a bunch of sub niches in Spanish. And the other thing I just want to quickly mention here is something that I've been testing recently is even if you have a Spanish website, once it's got a bit of authority, you can actually rank it in English. So for example, this German website is now a DR10. This Spanish website is now a DR9. They're both going up in terms of organic traffic and the keywords, which is great, especially after the helpful content update. And one thing I've been testing is trying to rank those foreign sites in English niches, right? So for example, if you look at the keyword, what birds eat worms, you can see a site that I own in English, chipperbirds.com is already ranking twice on the first page, but on the second page, and obviously we've only produced this content recently, so it's not going to update super quickly, but you can see my German site is ranking there and my Spanish website is ranking there right at the top of the second page. So it's quite an interesting experiment because you create these sub niche websites in foreign languages, you can build up the authority, get trust from Google. And then once that's done, potentially you could rank in English. I'm not an expert in that. It's just something I'm experimenting with, but it's working right now. And then we can rank first page with multiple websites. So if we come onto our sub niche ideas, we've got stuff like dream interpretations, astrology, personal growth, relationship advice, spirit animals is quite an interesting one and meditation techniques. So if we plug in the keyword like astrologia, which is Spanish for astrology into SE ranking, we can see how competitive it is, but we can also see other keywords related to it that might be easier to rank for. And now if we click on filter, we can filter down the difficulty to 10 or less Hit apply filters and just see, okay, are there potential keywords that we could rank for? And the cool thing about that is there's a lot of easy keywords in Spanish that we could potentially get traffic for. As you can see, there's 1,400. Now I would aim for at least 500 low keyword difficulty keywords. The more, the better, the more they're interrelated, the better. So if they've all got astrology in the keyword, that's perfect. But basically it's very, very easy to find those sub niches using chat GP and a combination of SE ranking plus foreign searches. And for this hundred websites project, I want to focus on two things really. Number one, pets niches and number two, spiritual niches, because I know they're both AI friendly. I've tested it myself. And also the lower competition, plus they have high search volumes and it's easy to monetize. Now you can actually filter on SE ranking by search intent. So for example, you can say, right, I just want to focus on informational stuff. So if we hit selected like that, we've still got 1,300 keywords, which is great. But the problem is some of them might be irrelevant and some of them are going to be overlapping in terms of search intent. They're not all going to be a unique search intent. So for example, and this is the fifth time I've tried to pronounce it, Aspectos Astrologia and Aspectos and Astrologia. I know I've butchered the accent there, but essentially those two keywords are basically the same thing. So really you might only have 30% of those keywords. You might find 1,300 and actually there's only 400. You can realistically create unique content with unique search intent around. 
So now that we've identified the niche that we want to go into for our first website, how do we actually go about buying the domain? I mean, especially if you don't speak the language like a pro and you can barely pronounce it. So what you can say from here is give me 10 domain name ideas relevant to the topic of Astrologia. And it gives you the domain name plus the translation, right? So for example, Astro Consejo, and then buy the domain, super easy. I can just go to my WPX account, type in the domain name, hit search, and you can see that the domain chat GPT is recommended is available to buy for just $13.99 per year in dollars. Now we can buy that. I will set up a separate hosting plan when we've got a hundred sites and usually those sort of bulk hosting plans where you've got so many websites at scale, they'll actually handle the migration for you. So for now we're going to use WPX, but when we've found a really good hosting provider, I'm going to switch because obviously you can't have a hundred websites on the same hosting. That would be insane. It would look very suspicious. You know, even if we're not building PBNs, we would look like we're having a hundred PBNs. So that's basically it. And there we go. The first website of them all is set up. Now I just need to get the keyword research ready and buy seven more of those bad boys, but it's a good start. Day one, first website is set up. We're ready to go. The keyword research is pretty much done. I just need to filter it and maybe I'll do a keyword clustering video on how we can separate the search intent on each of these keywords and make sure that we have a bunch of keywords ready to go. So yeah, that's basically how we're doing it. The simple as that. Now, if you want access to all these prompts, the prompt for finding the 50 sub niches and even comparing them in different languages. If you want the prompt on how to get the domain names and the prompt on how to find as many monetization methods as you can so that you get the right profitable niche like this, then feel free to check out my free chat GPT SEO course, which will have all the prompts I've talked about in today's video. And if you want to have a call about how to get more leads, traffic and sales to your website, you get an SEO domination plan. We'll answer your questions. You'll learn the best link building strategies and how to outrank your competitors. Feel free to book that in. Link is in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.